<laughs> oh, that's going to make me laugh. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Big Sexy Chat. I'm Crystal. I'm Murph. And welcome to our fat community. We're so happy to have you here with all of us. We're going to talk a little bit about current events today. And I want to talk about A.D. Bryant, who I love and adore. Did you watch Shrill when she was on Shrill? Uh, no, I don't have Hulu. It's the one oh. streaming service I don't have. Oh, it was so good. It's totally worth the watch. Well, you've probably heard about the uh, fat um, pool party. Yes. It was oh, quite controversial. <laughs> In our community, yeah. Yes. Anyway, I wanted to talk about A.D. Bryant because I saw her on Stephen Colbert last week. And I'm very excited. She's on a new show called Human Resources. And I guess it's a spinoff of something called Big Mouth. And you probably know Big Mouth. And you might even know Human Resources because I know you kind of geek out on that kind of like stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you and you and our editor too. <laughs> but anyway, so AD was talking about on Stephen Colbert, how she's in this new show. She's voicing a character um, in this show called, um, I keep saying, um, I need to stop that for Ashley. <laughs> she's going to kill me. But she's in a new show and it's called Human Resources. And she plays a ladybug, I believe. And I'm so excited. She's also celebrating her 10th anniversary on Saturday Night Live. And I love her on SNL. She's amazing. I guess Lauren Michaels discovered her when she was on Second City. And yeah, he, Chicago, he, right? Yeah, and he fell yeah. in love with her. Like the rest of us fell in love with her. She's so great. And that got me to thinking a little bit about this show that they cast Renee Zellweger in it. And the show is called That Thing About Pam. And I don't know if you saw this in the news, but they cast Renee Zellweger and they had her put on a fat suit. Ugh. It's so awful. Like, come on. It's 2022. Can't you just hire a fat actor? There's well, so many. And Renee Zellweger is so terrified of being fat. I know. That it's just, it perpetuates this horrible narrative over and over again. You know. Yeah, didn't she gain 30 pounds for Bridget Jones' diary and it was like a big deal and then she lost her 30 pounds? Yeah, and she's always struggled with, yeah. I think, some sort of eating disorder or something. Disordered eating. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I was just really annoyed by that. It's Wearing a fat suit is, I'm going to say it's akin to going out in blackface. Yeah. It's just, and there's plenty of fat actresses, you know, or actors in this case, obviously, they need to cast a woman. But I started thinking about all the fat actors. Okay, we know about Melissa McCarthy. She gets all the roles. Um, we know about Bridget Everett because she's in that show that we love. Mm -hmm. There's so many more, though. And Renee Zellweger is not one of them. Nicole Byer, the comedian. Have you seen her a Netflix show? Oh, love she's her. so funny. Lizzo. I wrote down Katie Bates. Cameron Manheim. Gabrielle Sibide, although this character is white. Mindy Kalin, there's so many. Why didn't they just cast one of them? Why didn't they cast A.D. Bryant? She could have done this role. Yeah. Why do they do that? It's so gross. And so incredibly frustrating. And, and just like you said, it's like, check the vibe. The, the, the world right now is saying, can we please have authenticity? Right. And we, that doesn't mean you get to leave fat people out of that. Right. Yes. Yes. They, yeah, the, the world is good at leaving fat people and trans people out of everything pretty much. And, you know, black and brown people too, of course. I'm going to take my glasses off and read to you a little bit about this show, Human Resources, because Murph, since you work in uh, mental health, this just sounds like so up your alley to me. And it sounds really, really funny too. I was like, oh, I'm going to probably like this as well. But I just did the screenshots from the uh, internet, from that crazy thing called the internet. And I love that it's about um, apparently like mental wellness. And you said something to me that made me think about this the other day too, but this is reminding me of it. This workplace comedy pulls back the curtain on the daily lives of hormone monsters, depression kitties, shame wizards, and other creatures that help humans journey through every aspect of life from puberty to parenthood to the twilight years. And the voices are Nick Kroll, Ali Wong, Kiki Palmer, whom I love, and A.D. Bryant. Yay. Have you ever um, watched Big Mouth? Or I've seen um, some of the songs. So they have songs that are um, 
you know, woven into the cartoon. I have not actually seen an episode. Um, it's in my queue of many things. To watch. <laughs> yes. All of our um, queues are huge. Seriously, but <laughs> I, I've heard nothing but fabulous, fun things. It sounds really fun. It's on Netflix. I guess it just started the um, Human Resources is a spinoff of Big Mouth. And Human Resources just launched on Netflix, I think, this past week. So, yeah. Oh, you know who else is... Um, you know who else is in that show about Pam? Ooh. The thing about Pam? I know you know this woman. Her name is Katie Mixon. And she's a mom on another TV show, but she's a fat woman. I'm like, isn't she offended they hired Renee Zellweger and put a fat suit on her? Doesn't she know how offensive it is to put a fat suit on somebody? Especially when there's, you know, 50 actors you could hire for this role instead of this. Anyway. I digress, but I just remembered she's on it too. And she, she's adorable. She's so freaking cute. I love her on everything she does. She kind of looks like a little bit like Melissa McCarthy in a way, but anyway, I've seen, everything I've seen her in, she's been fabulous. So, and then, yeah, they could cast um, someone like Lizzo, you know, maybe Lizzo can move over into acting. Well, she kind of already has. Has she? She has. Oh. Have you heard of her, her new show on Amazon prime? Where they're going to be inviting fat girls to come dance with her? Yes. It's called Can't wait. Watch Out for the Big Girls. What? what? Girls. <laughs> um, it's fantastic. It's a reality dance show competition. Nice. Yeah. And um, it's at the, the people who win. I don't know if there's going to be multiple winners, but they get to go on tour with Lizzo as her backup dancer. Oh, my goodness. How I mean, fun would that be? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you get a whole new life. It's not like, oh, you win, you know, something at the end of it and some money. You get a whole new life. That's so exciting. Oh, man. Just for the opportunity to meet Missy Elliott, I would give my left hand probably. Right. <laughs> oh, man. Well, and that, too. the outfits, like every everything that I've seen is like these really bright colored, like very... um the, like skin showing all love over it. the place and like really cool fabrics. And I'm just like, yes, I love this. Yes. That's going to be fantastic. I love Lizzo. She's so, well, t I mean, it's hard to know for sure, but she seems very authentic. And I know, I know some people get a little bit like, eh, you know, because like she didn't start this, you know, fat liberation body love movement. And I don't think she's really claiming it, but I think people get a little bit, upset because she gets so much press, you know, which yeah. it, for me, it just furthers our movement. It furthers, except, you know, normalizing fat bodies. Look at the Super Bowl, the dancers at the Super Bowl halftime show, a lot of fat, beautiful girls back there dancing. That was amazing. Absolutely. And you know, when, when people say things like that, it just <laughs> it irritates the hell out of me because I know. I, you have a beautiful fat black woman there's never been a time where she's ever had, or that gender race <laughs> mm -hmm. everything has ever had a time where they were in the spotlight. So yeah. if you're upset that she's getting too much attention, um, you can GFY. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. It's silly. P people get mad about everything. You know, I know it's, it, it, she, obviously, you know, she didn't start the movement and I think she would be the first person to tell you that anyway, but yeah, let's be happy because it's, it is, it's normalizing our bodies and it's normalizing that we can be backup dancers. We can be the lead. We're really fit. Sometimes we can march and dance all over the stage while playing a flute and singing. And, you know, it's just because we're fat doesn't make us unhealthy. So I think it normalizes all those things. And I love her. I love her energy. She seems really fun. Oh my gosh. Imagine how fun it would be to hang out with her. Oh, it'd be the best. <laughs> and and she's stay up past 9 p.m. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me too. Yes. Yeah. It's nice to see. And I wish AD would get more roles. I wish AD yeah. would get more roles outside of SNL. Like I said, she was in Shrill, but yeah, she could have been cast at this role in this stupid show about this white lady murderer lady. That's, I'm like, I'm, I'm not interested at all, especially because of this fat suit, but either way, I'm not interested. And then it's bum I'm bummed out that they couldn't find a fat actor for that show. Yeah. And it's always disappointing to see whoever the celebrity is that does it, you know, it's yeah. like, okay, you know, what, what else do you have that isn't going on, but that's what you felt was necessary to do. 
just never understood it. I'm going to cough real quick. Ashley pineapple. <coughs> okay. Let's get back to this. Well, the yeah. other thing I was going to tell you um, is that Lizzo's show comes out this week on the 25th of March. Oh, we're dropping this episode 26th, right? Yeah. yeah. Woohoo! Perfect timing. Um, listen to this and then go watch that and then come back. <laughs> Tell us what you think. I made a kind of a list of some fat actors. I'm going to read them out loud. And this is like a... Uh, do, 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 do. <laughs> to everybody listening out there in internet land... If you know Bridget Everett, Lizzo, Kathy Bates, Nicole Byer, the comedian, Gabare Sibide, the Queen, Queen Latifah, Mindy Kalin, Natasha Rothwell, if you know uh, Rosie O'Donnell, <laughs> Cameron Mannheim, you, uh, Melissa McCarthy, I would say Chrissy Metz, but I have a feeling I'm too dirty for her. But if you all know any of those people and you have people that know people, we want to interview them. We want to interview any fat entertainer and oh, I would be in heaven just to, to interview any of them here, here. Yeah. So that's my, that's my little do, 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 my telegraph for the world. I'm putting it out there in the universe for all of you people that are woo woo. I was going to say you're manifesting <laughs> yes. the telegraph to the world. Actually put in some telegraph music. <laughs> do, 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 do. Well, yes. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's so. fantastic. Well, I have a hot topic. Oh, yay. So I think that we really need to have a one-on-one beginner's discussion about BDSM and consent. Mm, consent, yeah. very important. We get lots of questions and um, lots of comments about BDSM. I think there are some um, misinformation there are some preconceived notions there are um just a lot of things to consider when it comes to bdsm um but you mentioned it we are talking about consent do you think we should say what bdsm is yeah go for it can okay. hurt um so bdsm you've got some some words here that build out an acronym. Mm -hmm. So you have bondage, dominance, discipline, submission, sadism, and masochism. Mm. And all of those things come together into a glorious little kink ball that we're going to slowly start to discuss and unravel. Absolutely. The consent thing. Consent. <laughs> what'd you say, Ashley? Um, what'd you say? Let's talk about consent. Consent, enthusiastic consent, right? It's not just no longer consent. It's enthusiastic consent. And I love that people are talking about it. I love that people are considering it. I hope they're teaching it in schools because I never got taught about consent. It's not that my parents didn't want to teach me about consent. They didn't think about it. Right. Too well, many I, things happen. Yeah. A lot of things that they grew up with was, well, that's the expectation that you deal with it, not that you consent to have it happen to you or uh, to participate in it or all the other things. No matter how trashy, trashy I dress, that's not consent. Right. Even if I'm 100% naked, that's not consent. You got it. <laughs> Some people struggle with that, right? If you're in oh. bed with somebody and you're both naked, that doesn't, that's not consent. Right. It involves a conversation and you have to clearly hear the person say, yes, I want to do this. And they need to be sober. Yes. They can't be under the influence. They have to be present and they really have to, like you said, want to, to be involved. They have to be enthusiastic about it. It can't just be like, well, this is what's expected of me or right. well, right. we've been on X number of dates. So that's, you know, I have yeah. to get this up or whatever. I owe him oral sex or her oral sex because right. he bought me or she bought me dinner. Exactly. You don't owe anybody shit. Turns no. Out. And it's like you said, with communication is lubrication, right? Mm -hmm. The more you talk about the things that you want and that you're interested in, the better the sex is going to be, the better the setup is going to be for the sex. Especially if you're going to try to do something in the BDSM world, if you're going to do some bondage or some impact play. Well, all kink, I think, involves a lot of consent. And I kind of, I like when people tell me they're getting interested into kinky things because I know that one of the most important things 
about being a kinky person is that you have to negotiate a lot and talk about your sex life a lot and talk about what you want to do and what you don't want to do and where your hard limits are. And I love that. I love anything that involves conversation. Absolutely. I think that's probably the most important aspect of any kink is that mm -hmm. you're having a conversation. You're talking about the things that you enjoy or the things that you thought about, but aren't sure how to put to practice and maybe, Ooh, that's a hard no. Like you mentioned, hard limit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the way it is for me, but that's something that you have to explore and kink gives you that platform to do it. It really gives you the opportunity to practice. You know, when I think about BDSM, I think of folks kind of like, well, I'm not good at it, or I didn't really understand it. And so they just kind of like, well, I tried it once and kind of push it over to the side. And it's like, well, but it's new. You have to practice it. It's just like any other skill. If you're doing rope bondage, you're doing shibari, it, you have to learn how to do knots in a special right. way. You have to learn a whole new practice. So you're not going to jump in and be an expert at BDSM. Nobody expects that. Neither nope. But you in your head, you know, but, but in general, your partner isn't expecting that you're going to be a guru at shibari. <laughs> <laughs> when I had my boutique, it came up a lot and I would tell my clients, the cool thing about kinky, kinky people is they tend to be very open about body types. They're more like into what's going on between your ears. They're more into what your kinks are. And if they align more than, do you look like a Barbie doll? Now that's, you know, a very big generalization. Of course, that's not true hundred percent of the time. But in general, it is a very opening, com open community. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Which is so interesting to me. I was doing a little bit of research on BDSM and, you know, looking up some just general things about it. And um, I thought this was fascinating. The, uh, the psychology community felt that BDSM was actually a mental illness and marked it as a mental illness in 1905. And it, it lasted until 2013 as listed as a mental illness. And to hear that, you know, now and like the amount of communication, the amount of understanding and um, intimacy you have to have with your partner to be successful at BDSM. When I hear that it it's, they're considering it a mental illness just because of the kink. It's like, are you kidding me? These people are having the best sex of their lives because they're having this mental sexual yes. experience as well. It's so true. And you have to, there's a lot of imagination being used in the BDSM world. There's a lot of acceptance. There's a lot of um, negotiating yes and no, all that talking. I swear to you, I know it sounds so freaking boring, but the more you talk about your sex life with your partner, the better it gets. It just keeps getting better and better and better. And it does. It's like a good practice to get your kind of communication chops you know, uh, up to speed because you have to do a lot of communication. You have to have your uh, safe word. Our safe word here on the show is pineapple. <laughs> Whenever we mess up and we say pineapple to Ashley and she helps us edit out our ums and things like that. But no, seriously, people have, you know, they have safe words and discussions about, you know, when is it okay to do these kinds of things? And when is it not, you know, never at, never out, with other people or I don't know, people have all kinds of different rules. It's so great because you have to talk about everything. And I know 50 shades of gray. Oh, so problematic. And I know I've talked with you about this before, but I do love the fact that that ridiculous set of books, and I'm not here to book shame. I love that it brought out the kink in so many people that were so vanilla beforehand. Mm -hmm. I have tons of friends and clients that said it changed their lives. But I love the fact that they were always communicating, working on the contract, discussing, negotiating. Oh, that was dreamy. The rest of it, not so yeah. much. <laughs> exactly. mm -hmm. It's okay. It's right. Just, right. It's, it's like okay. one step up from vanilla porn. But, yeah. you know, it, it. you're right. It had an audience. Mm -hmm. And that audience then got to explore this entire taboo i'm using air quotes taboo right. side of you know, their their sexual fantasies that really was finally mainstream you know i think a lot of people in the kink community were very upset that it was out there in the mainstream as like well that's not how we we do this and it's mm -hmm. like okay 
But this is going to open the door and then somebody's going to type in, how do I participate in BDSM or Google, you know, this or that. And they're going to then rabbit hole into this whole community. Absolutely. I had people telling me it changed their lives. I have one friend. She texted me when I, have you heard of 50 shades of guy? I said, no, she goes, I love it. It's changing my life. It's, it's about kinky sex. And I was like, Dean, like, you know, elitist, I shouldn't have been like this. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cause I know her, you know, like I know her sex life. And I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'll be fine. And then like two months later, she said, Crystal, have you read 50 shades of gray? I go, no, you don't understand. She like typically didn't give her husband any blowjobs since they got married. She's like, that's all I think about now. And I love giving them and I love having sex with him again. And our sex life, I'm like, oh, Amazon, where can I order this book to get it here tomorrow? <laughs> I was like, really? She goes, that's the, I highlighted pages I want him to do. Oh my goodness. Wow. That's awesome. But I was like, are you? Mm. And then I read it in the first book. And did you read any of them, Murph? Yeah. So they're not well written, right? It's like no, the grammar it's like and crap. Is bad. It's, it's just porn for mainstream, you know, it's right. But I love it. I know it's so ridiculous, but the yeah. Twilight and Fifty Shades, like, <laughs> yeah. it's so stupid, but I still am, like, fascinated by it. I'm so happy that it opened up so many people's minds, like the main, you know, vanilla middle America, exactly. learning about kink and that it's not a mental illness. Right. And kink can, kink can be, mean a million things. BDSM is a little different, right? There's a lot right. of, a, it probably uh, ratchets up when you go into the BDSM world. It does. But being tied up or tying somebody else up, else up that's not that kinky mm -mm. but anybody can experiment with that right anybody can try that and just see if they like it or not or if they like being the tire or the tie e right i was reading um some statistics and they said uh about it's like 27.9 percent or something like that of women um are interested in handcuffs in the bedroom mm -hmm. you know and it's just like that's a simple a simple toy that could be part of a brand new BDSM um, set, you know, that you can purchase. <laughs> yeah. Usually it comes with handcuffs and a, a whip, paddle. Mm -hmm. a paddle. Yeah. Some, one of the two, a blindfold, um, you know, and, and something just a little extra kink and something to try out. But I think it's, it's an exciting thing for someone to be able to really consider how this is going to change their life in terms of opening up other doors. Because once you try those things, then it's like, oh yeah, well, I kind of like this, or I like this about that. And then that kind of leads to another and another, and you, you start exploring in that community. So BDSM really is that acceptable chance to get into kink. Yep. Have you I'm done gonna, I'm going to cough. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Thanks, Ashley. Pineapple. What were you going to say? Have I what? Have you ever um, done shibari? No, not shibari. Um, I don't. I know all about it. And I've definitely seen, been to classes and stuff, but I've never done it myself. What about you? No, same here. Yeah, it's so it's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, I've seen lots of lots of classes, lots of work done, but mm -hmm. never experienced it myself. Did you see that one image go viral of that fat girl that was being? She was put in suspension. And she was basically yeah. about it. Yeah, I need to find that. It was really beautiful. She's just hanging there and like all you know, all those beautiful, you know, knots and everything. Yeah. You know what I was gonna say too, another thing about um 50 Shades of Grey. Well, two things. Sometimes people are too afraid to ask their partners of things, but when it's in a book, it takes the pressure off of them as of their ask, or like they're so kinky they thought of this, but they're like, oh babe, look at this. This sounds interesting, right? So it takes the pressure off them a little bit, especially I've noticed people that have been in the same relationship with the same person for a long time. It gets more and more difficult for people to ask for stuff because I think they, they think their partner has some kind of view of them and now you're going to be kinky and all. So it gives people permission and it got people reading other books, other erotica that was better written and had more consent and, you know, all the things I can say that for sure when I had my store, there was a lot of um, people who were in the kink world that were very elitist about Fifty Shades of Grey. And I get it. It wasn't good, but it's still, it's something that got people going. 
So otherwise, people are just going to continue to have their boring old vanilla sex. I'm, I'm happy for people to finally try a blindfold because you know what happens when you wear a blindfold? Everything gets like, zzz, everything's on fire. All, everything you touch is just like, oh, you know, yep. it feels I so good. Yeah, those heightened senses are, uh, that's the whole point Ooh. of the mindfulness activity, honestly. Yes. Uh, and that's one thing that I really like about BDSM is that you have to not only have that communication, but you also have to really hone into your partner's energy mm -hmm. in terms of how they're experiencing whatever is happening to them while you're, while you're playing and you're having those conversations while you're doing it. Do you want yes. more of this? Do you want less of this? Do you, mm -hmm. you know? And so that builds. And when you've got someone who's never really explored that concept of going yeah. and talking to their partner about what they like, um, even an, an extra moan while you're doing that is indication, you know, it doesn't have mm -hmm. to be verbal. Um, right. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful practice, uh, BDSM, because you sure. really have to, you really have to understand the concept of um, trying things mm -hmm. and being open. Mm -hmm. you don't always, you know, with, with certain sexual practices, you don't do that. You just get in there and get going and do that. But you're having to, it's not always just about the sex. Sometimes right. it's just about the dominance and like, I'm doing this for my partner to make them feel like um, they're being held, but they're safe and it's still sexual. Um, so it's not always just about having that orgasm. It's really about being in tune with your partner. I want to go back to something about that in a second, but something else occurred to me when you're speaking. A lot of times fat people, fat women I'll speak to specifically, Sometimes we're not in our bodies. We're somewhere else because we have our fat armor on. We're waiting for somebody to tell us how fat we are out in public. Sometimes we're just not in here. We're somewhere else trying to do the tap dance to, you know, keep people thinking that you're pretty or, you know, putting on your feminine performance, feminine performance. We're just not here a lot of times. We're not here in our center and not centered in our bodies. Mm -hmm. we're waiting to have a different body. Sometimes we're shamed about our body. So many things get women, fat women out of their brains. When you practice something that's kinky or BDSM, you really have to be, come back into your body. Take breaths, be, sh be, you know, be here, be present in the moment when you're doing this instead of out somewhere else, your brain is. And I think a lot of people do that, right? Where your brain is always somewhere else. I got to go pick up the dry cleaning, get the groceries, blah, blah, blah. When you're doing kinky stuff, boom, you're in it. Yeah. And That's if you're not, exactly. And if you're not, you know, okay, stop. We're putting yep. a stop. I can't get into this. And because you mm -hmm. have to be in a headspace, you have to be paying attention. You have to be attuned. You have to be mindful. Um, totally. Really, it's in, you have to be consenting all the time. All the time. Yeah. And this sometimes I know bursts some people's bubbles. These are going to be people that their bubbles are burst because they're not a true dom, probably. But honestly, it's the dom and its job in that whatever that scene is to be very nurturing of the person that they're playing with, the scene they're in with. It's supposed to be their job to make sure that person has water and is comfortable and it's not too hot or not too cold, has enough lubricant, isn't in too much pain or too much agony or whatever. It's tickling or whatever. It's the dom's job to make sure they nurture the person that they're playing with. So even though it's you're supposed to be the dom and you're mean and you're doing this, no, of course you're going to nurture your partner. But that's lost on a lot of people, especially those people that are like on fat life and they're pretending they're doms and, you know, they just use, sometimes they use fat women or I'm a dom, I'm going to dom you, you know, like, all right. <sighs> okay, dude. <laughs> Yeah. And I think part of that too is, you know, when you were talking about fat, fat people not always being present in their body. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we have to, you know, mention is fat people are often seen as automatically consenting. Yes. You oh, know? that pisses me off. Yeah. There, there's this <laughs> misnomer that we, um, well, we're fat, so we'll get any sex we can and we'll take whatever sex we can. Um, and that. Fuck that. Exactly. <laughs> As I like to say, you couldn't afford me. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's no way in hell. I would never settle for anything. And I, 
you know, it's one of my most popular blogs that I've ever written is don't, don't settle fat girls do not settle. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah. It makes me sick. It pisses me off. And I'm sure women and men do this, but I know for sure when I've been to events where it's a lot of fat people, especially if I was new, you know, I'd be like the fresh meat and I'd be like, yeah. I'm not sucking your dick in the parking lot. I don't know who you think I am, but, and Hey, if you want to suck a million dicks in the parking lot, go for it. That's cool with me. I would never shame anybody about that, but don't assume I'm going to be that person because I'm fat. I will more likely punch you in the taint. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, I needed that. That's That's so, I just imagined me. you with like a superhero cape and just like, <laughs> like <laughs> bam, right in the taint, right in we the have, gooch. <laughs> we have to get a little uh, a meme made up of that. That's fantastic. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, and uh, why? Uh, I guess this just used to be a thing where people were, I don't know, maybe women settled for less than they do nowadays. I hope anyway, I hope most people are not settling for whoever throws them some attention. I hope everybody's on board. Now we know that's not, that's not attractive. That doesn't, I'm not complimented at all. Right. Yeah. No, I, this whole concept of fat, fat women, especially are hurting for a squirt and, you know, it's like, yeah. no, no, this is not how this works. I'm not interested in you. That's not nope. not even on the table as a potential option for not that. even. But that's nice that um you think that women are just your sex objects and you get to do whatever you want with them, especially when they're fat. Yeah, we're just your blow up fat blow up doll. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I think I get a little heated on this topic. In fact, I'm starting to sweat because it pisses me off so bad. Only because I've seen it so many times, you know, at different events and stuff where there's a lot of fat people. And I just want to be like, oh, you you get out and come here. Like, sit down. Let me talk to you. Well, and and those places often breed predators, right? I That's know, like, yeah. you know, they're going to be in a large area with mm -hmm. lots of people they can prey upon, likely that are inebriated in some fashion. Yeah. And, you know, that's, that's sadly what often um, happens. So I know, I know. Just another it's... important reason to think to yourself, okay, what am I willing to uh, participate in? And sure. when, when am I going to create those boundaries that I know that I'm going to accept this for me and nothing less? Hey, better late than never. I finally learned how to have boundaries around the age of 49 and I'm 54 now. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Took a while, but now I'm like, oh, Boundaries are sexy. Hashtag boundaries are sexy. Yeah. Because they are. Sexy boundaries. I love it. Um, mm. I was going to tell you too, I, I've heard of a book. Um, I haven't read it, but lots of friends that I have that are in um, the BDSM world um, really like this book called Better Bondage for Every Body. Body, B-O-D-Y. I love it. B-O-D-Y. Yeah. Um, by Evie Vane. Huh. So if you're, if you're into rope bondage or bondage in general, um, from the folks that I know that are in, um, that, that kink culture really enjoyed that book. So maybe something to check out. How do you spell her last name? E V Vane? V A N E. Okay. Yeah. The cool thing about the Bay area where you and I both kind of live, I know you're a little bit further out, a lot of fat activists in our area. A lot of fat liberationists and a big kink and queer community. Yes. Which makes everything so awesome and so fun and colorful and inclusive. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we could do better, you know, with the inclusivity. Of course. But it's not bad, you know, considering other places in the country or the world. It's pretty, yeah, pretty well, awesome here. <laughs> it really is because there's times where I'm like, Oh, that exists? That happens uh -huh. someplace? Like, oh, I can't imagine that in my beautiful little progressive California bubble. I know. We get so, we get so <laughs> in a bubble. Um, yeah. Do we have any, um, I didn't check the inbox. Do we have any questions in our inbox for, um, our inbox, by the way, if you ever want to send us a question is sexy at bigsexychat.com. But did you check it? Do we have anything good in there? I did. We got a question about fetishizing. Um, what do I do if I think my the new guy I'm dating is fetishizing me for being fat? Hmm. <sighs> That's a tough one. Have you ever 
Have you ever been with somebody that's really into fat people, fat women? My husband. Yeah. But does he like, does he think other women are beautiful? Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah. That's, I think that's the difference, at least in my mind, is that like my partner, I'm his first fatty. He's always been with smaller women, but he like, he thinks there's something beautiful about all women. And I mean, all ages, all everybody. Yep. He's, it's great. It's awesome. I did date a guy that only dated fat women. Ugh. What do we, I have this word I call him all the time. And my boyfriend's like, what are you talking about? Well, that loser, this guy, it was weird. First, okay, at first I meet him. It's kind of cool because he's really into fat girls. So I feel very like liberated, right? Like starfish, noon, lights on, sober. Woo! He's loving all of it, you know, like, ugh. And I'm like, and he had like tons of fat, fat girl porn, like lockers and lockers. Like he bought the, the VHS tapes and it was, it was weird. I was like, whoa. But then all of a sudden I got to understanding that he really only loved me for my body, which is weird when you're fat. Mm -hmm. I was like, Hey, but then I was like, Oh, Hey, wait. So you don't really like me. What's in my head. You like this package and that's it. And if I lost weight, he wouldn't be into me anymore. And I was like, okay, that's fetishizing. Yeah. That's too far. That's not fun. That's mm -hmm. absolutely agreed. I think that we, uh, we really have this strange scenario every time we meet a cis man, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, is he fetishizing me? Mm -hmm. Is he, you know, is he interested just because of my weight or mm -hmm. because of the way my body looks? Um, yeah, I get, especially when any kind of interaction on social media, oh, yeah. it's an automatic, like, oh, you know, totally. <laughs> <laughs> just, okay, here we go. You know, I've, I've been asked to be a fetish, you know, like, I'll pay mm -hmm. you to, you know, eat food and send pictures and, I'll pay you to, you know, come sit on me. And it never ends the things that I've been offered to do. And I, I know there are, I have friends that make really good money too. doing mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just amazing to me how many men think that it's acceptable. And I'm sure there's women out there too, I mean, but it, it's almost always, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a man reaching out that's just like Ugh. it's so, just it's queasy it gives you the it queasy. is very yeah i always tell my boyfriend you know you guys you ruin it for yourselves <laughs> stop <laughs> you know yeah but what what would you say like what, where's the line between fetish and just how do, can you tell if you someone's fetishizing you or if they're really into you that's got to be a weird feeling to not be sure because i was sure like, okay, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm getting out of here. Fuck this, you know? Right. Well, I think you can, I think you can have a preference. I think you can, mm -hmm. you know, have a, a body type that you really enjoy looking at. Mm -hmm. um, but I think once you get into, uh, that's the only type that gets me hard or that's the yeah. only that me excited um, or that I have to be in control of something to do with that body type, yeah. um, whether it's like feeding or um, maintaining a weight or any, anytime you get into that sort of stuff, yeah. you're, you're talking about fetishizing. Yeah. Run, run the other way. Run. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's well, not okay. Yeah. And, and unless you absolutely know the deal and you're getting paid for whatever it is, you know, or you're, you're into it too, you know, that could be yeah. something too, but for me, I say our we our instincts know what's going on before we do sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely trust your gut. There is something to be said for that gut. It's finely honed tool that you've been honing your whole life. And if you feel like a little bit, eh, trust that and just make sure you're doing your due diligence because there's a reason why we get those feelings when we're around certain people, you know, like me around a narcissist. I'm like, ah, 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 can do, no can do. Oh, I get like, ah, I get nervous, scared, run. And they're always really loud. And I'm just like, get me out of here. Get me out of here. Danger, danger. Right. All the warning bells go off. 
<laughs> oh yeah, I'm, I'm I'm grateful that I have that. That one's tuned for a lot of reasons I won't go into here. But yeah, I, uh, that one I'm like red flag, red flag. I see them. I know. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think probably you know we should all trust our instincts a little bit more. Because uh, yeah, well, trust well, your wisdom, your own wisdom. Yeah. Well, and we're the we're the expert on ourselves, right? You know, we totally. talk about that in therapy of just you know you better than anyone else. So if if yeah. you're not paying attention to to you and your warning signs that you're getting. Um, then you're, you know, you're setting yourself to up to be some, some sort of situation, whether it be you're mm -hmm. disappointed or angry or upset or whatever it is. Um, you got to trust how you're feeling and listen to your body. If your hair, the hair stands up on the back of your neck or on your arms, that's a good sign. Run danger, danger. Oh. When I worked in forensics, that was the number one thing I'd pay attention to because I was already in heightened situations going mm -hmm. into the, the state hospitals and working with the criminally insane. And you'd have mm -hmm. times where you'd turn a corner and you'd see somebody and it would be like, ooh, the hmm. hair on the back of my neck stood up. I need to get out of here. You know, that kind of thing. Um, something. It you You do need to trust it. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I hope she figures it out. I hope she can figure out what's going on there. And... You know, there's probably some questions you can ask. Have you ever dated a thin person? Do you only date fat girls or men? Um, if I lost like 20 pounds, what would you think of that? Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, this person on one of my on my curvy girl page on Facebook said, "When somebody tells you you got a fat ass, take it as a compliment." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, I do. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, like that's, that's my partner, right? He's more like, yeah, I love that fat ass, but he also likes thin asses. So I feel like that's more normal. You know, Absolutely. that makes me happy actually that he kind of is turned on by pretty much all women. Yeah. But also me, you know, but not because I'm fat and not, not if I wasn't fat. So right. that's more, I don't want to, normal is not the right word, but more healthy, maybe more, I'll be healthier. Yeah. It's healthy uh, because you're looking at the person. You're not just standardizing to, it has to be this one thing. Right. Yeah. So if I was going to fetishize a man, what I, I love hands on a man. I like the way their hands look or their forearms. It's like, Ooh, I love, I love that. <laughs> I'm a bicep girl. I like faces a lot too. Yeah. And that little line that's like right at their Swim, it's the swimmer line or whatever they call it. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's great. Oh, when men, I tell my boyfriend this all the time when men are doing something, they reach for something and their shirt lifts up, and you can see like the underside of their little pot belly or their, their belly. And then yep. you could, I'm like, oh. a little bit of hair. You just <laughs> like, yeah. I love that part. <laughs> like if you're out to dinner somewhere and you see a, and like a waiter doing something like that, I'm like, it's so bad. I'm like, oh, look at that. Because <laughs> you're not really supposed to see that either, right? So it's like kind right. of like, ooh. I saw <laughs> it's forbidden. Yeah, it's so cute though. So sweet. Like that guy, I, I yelled at this guy at Safeway about a month ago because he didn't have his mask on. He called me fat bitch and probably told me I probably have a uh, diabetes. And oh, it was just a lovely experience. But um, fuck him. But um, anyway, he was you know, he kept commenting on my body, and I was like, Yeah, I know I'm fat. I also wear a size nine shoe and I have blue eyes and brown hair. And he kept at it. He kept at it. And when I ran into him, the egg department, then I ran into the produce department. He kept at it, told me I had diabetes. And I was like, sir, I don't really like to comment other people's bodies. I kind of make it a rule. But I have noticed you have a little bit of a pot belly and love handles. Now, I love love handles, but you have some. So maybe stop talking about my fat body. And he he's also very muscular up top. And I, I could tell he was like oh, shocked. But I was shocked I said it. I even dropped the F-bomb, which I didn't mean to because his kid was there. But I was like, fuck, you fucking have fucking love handles and a pot belly. Okay, maybe be like a model or something if you're going to pop off about my body. Okay, maybe you don't have a pot belly and love handles. I mean, I don't even care that he has them, but I was like, just going to lash out at him, right? And I was like, you have love handles and a pot belly. But I love love handles, but you have them, you know? Right. And I don't like them on you. <laughs> but not you. Not yours, sir. <laughs> That's just because of your attitude, sir. <laughs> and then I asked him, Where, how come you're not wearing a MAGA hat? And he's like, it's at home. I go, oh, I figured. Oh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, he and his son were smarter than everybody else in the grocery store. There's 150 people there, and he's he's smarter than all of us. But I digress. <laughs> I know, right? Not a fighting chance in the world. I know. And then the manager from the Safeway came to check him. Are you okay? 
Ah, uh, yes, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, I'm feeling pretty good about myself right now, except for putting his body down. Cause that's not okay ever, but I just, I flashed out and I'm just not, not proud, but it is what it is. I, I understand. <laughs> if you've learned, you've got the insight that you don't like doing it. It happened. You've gained some insight. You're moving forward. Moving on. Yes. <laughs> Any other questions today or should we talk about our favorite sex toy of the week? Oh, I think we should talk about the vibe of the week. Mm. It's a simple vibe. It's a... It's a doggy style that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'd love to be able to drop some Snoop Dogg in there. So <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so um, those who are watching will see this. Yes. This, let me get over here, is the doggy style strap. Yeah. And don't forget, Murph, that particular doggy style strap is made specifically for fat bodies specifically it is seven inches longer mm -hmm. and it is one and a half inches wider than the mm -hmm. standard version of this toy so um it's made by sport sheets it's called the doggy style strap and um sports sports sheets i know it's hard to say <laughs> makes um a, a, a doggy style strap, but this is the plus size version of it. Um, it is a cushioned velour covered um, foam pad mm -hmm. with um, what would you call this material? Is this like rayon, the straps? I would say neoprene, maybe? Neoprene, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's it's the standard, yeah, the, the standard um, like BDSM kind of strap, sorry, mm -hmm. you would restraints mm -hmm. but it's an actual strap so what happens is you have this positioned around your um what do you call that a fupa or get, get. <laughs> your get your underbelly your yes. apron i think mm -hmm. apron mm -hmm. a lot of words mm -hmm. um but basically you place the pad up against that area your it goes around your belly and up the straps come up around your butt. Mm -hmm. And so your partner loops their hands through the hand straps, their wrists go through it, and then they can hold on to it and control the pressure of the actual strap. And so once you do that, you're then able to have sex in the doggy style position, but without having to grip onto your partner, mm -hmm. um, on their love handles or their lower back. And every time, every time we ever have this dis this discussion, because we've had this discussion many times, mm -hmm. online, in person, mm -hmm. there's always somebody who's like, well, I like holding on to love hand love handle. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. And so sometimes that feels great and everything else. We get it. We're not yeah. saying you're ending any ability to touch your partner's side. Right. Not you can still do that. <laughs> We're saying you're going to use this in a way to help aid your partner in stabilizing in the doggy style position and really getting some enjoyment from the pressure that this cushion is going to push up on oh. your insides and press everything a little bit closer so mm -hmm. that the penetration a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. And then that person is sturdy being held in the doggy style position. It definitely kind of um, compacts, makes everything a little more compact like including the vaginal canal and everything. Absolutely. And some people can put two hand, two, one hand through both loops and keeps one hand free. It depends on how big you are. Like it wouldn't work with me because my, that part of my body is really big. Yeah. But for some people they can put the one hand through both loops and then just use it and then touch the love handles. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I, I'm too big for that. I have to have yeah, both me too. through, but, um, there are they are adjustable straps, so it does yeah. give you some extra length and some extra space. So um, you know you do have a, a lot of you get a lot from this tiny piece of fabric yeah. and, <laughs> and the neoprene straps that go with it. Um, good quality, Just very good. I think I already raved about sports sheets on one of our episodes, maybe episode two. Yes, if you find their products, no matter where you find it. It's sports sheets. Just buy it. It's going to be great. It's going to last forever. It holds up in the wash. It's awesome. Fantastic. Mean, one of the most fantastic brands I've ever purchased. Yes, just every everything that I get from them, I'm happy with. 
And they're one of the first companies to ever make something specifically for us. Thank and they you. feature plus size bodies on the packaging. Yes. And it's made in Southern California, if that's important to people. Oh, nice. So two things that people used to tell me that they loved about it. One is that sometimes, like me, I, my lower tummy slaps against my thigh, uh -huh. makes that sound. And another woman told me she sometimes gets air trapped in those little folds and it comes out sounding like a fart. Like, I don't have the fart sound anymore. I'm like, well, that's bonus. <laughs> so she's so thrilled. I'm like, okay, I'm glad I'm happy for you. I just put some lube in there in the future though. You won't get the fart sounds. Right. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, oh, I, good, good trick. <laughs> I was going to say the, um, the packaging, you know, it's always been, it's a, it's for your belly and, and doggy style, but I was looking at a video on sports sheets website and um, people also use it as a sling. So yeah. putting mm -hmm. the pad behind their neck and then putting their feet through the actual straps. Um, I mean, sports sheets sells a sling, so you don't yeah. have to do that. But if you were limber enough, you could use it in multiple <laughs> ways. I'm not limber enough to be able to make that happen because the straps aren't that long. <laughs> They're not that long. <laughs> Mostly it's my tummy gets in the way. Yeah. So like, yeah. I could probably be that limber if my gut wasn't right there. Exactly. Then I could just get the way. But yeah, it's like, woo, <laughs> your feet are really woo right by your ears. I can't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so I, love, like, I love them. I, this, it's a very affordable toy. It's yeah. 23 bucks, something like mm -hmm. that. Something um, like that. Yeah. You sell it on. Um, I do. I sell it on Bliss Connection and. The discount code is BSC20 for 20% off. I think mine's like 29. Yeah. But I have that code for 20% off. I, I have seen it on Amazon. I don't love people buying sex toys on Amazon because they have a lot of knockoffs, but there's a million stores that sell all the sports sheet stuff. And they're, like I said, no matter where you buy, it's going to be great quality. Yeah. But I mean, you're getting 20% off. Yeah. 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 Our coupon code, you should yes. be doing that. <laughs> right. Uh, right. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's an affordable toy. It's, yeah something that's very simple mm -hmm. and doesn't you don't have to plug it in you don't have to do anything special but it's just one of those sex aids that it creates just enough pressure it creates just enough balance mm -hmm. that it it enhances mm -hmm. the sexual activity mm -hmm. to the point where it's like this is something that i want to use on a regular basis i've had people tell me because they have a lower lower back issues it helps them with that too I don't have back issues, so I can't speak to it myself, but they've told me, oh, it helps me a lot. I do. I, I have lower back issues so much easier. I mean, mm. I love, uh, don't don't get me wrong, love the partner holding on sure. you know, hips mm -hmm. and rabbit, but can only sustain that for so long. Right. So uh -huh. I would much rather use that toy through the majority of the play and then have him hold on to my hips so that then it wasn't like uh, all that pressure on my lower back. Um, because it does, it, 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 this completely frees up any sort of pressure that would be on your lower back. It's amazing. I love it. I've always loved it. And going back to my list of people I would love to interview that we would love to interview, April Flores is the model and she's beautiful and hot. And I would love for us to interview her. Yes. She's great. She'd fit in perfectly with our hair. Your I know. pink. She's bright, like reddish pink. It's she has like the mermaid hair, right? Yeah. It's yeah. She looks great on their cover art. That's for sure. I'm just like, wow. Right. She's, April, get in contact with us. Come on, April. You want to on your, what you want on our show, please. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Hopefully everybody got to listen to our episode from last week. Got to listen to us interview Substantia Jones of the Add a Positivity Project. That was so much fun having that was, her on. That was so much fun. And she was so transparent and authentic and just Substantia. I just loved yeah, it. I know. Me too. <laughs> Well, I know that there's no way that we covered everything that goes into BDSM and key. Oh gosh, no, not even close. But also, I'm wondering, can we get somebody who's in the lifestyle as a guest? I have a friend who's a professional dom, and she is absolutely ready to come on the show whenever you want her. Ooh. So she mostly works with um, men. Occasionally, she gets a couple. But yeah, she's here in San Jose. She's local, and she is trained in the art of bondage which is a local brand of sort of like kinky BDSM play. And she said she would love to be on our show sometime. So we'll have to make that happen. That sounds wonderful. Yeah, she's great. 
I love, I love, we're going to have lunch on Wednesday. <laughs> I love to hear her stories. They're so amazing. Well, tell her we want her on the pod. Yes, for sure. Okay, let's do, we'll schedule that soon. Well, you guys know where you can find us at www.bigsexychat.com. You can find us on all the social medias at Big Sexy Chat, on Twitter at Big Sexy Chat Pod. Please like, subscribe, review, get our name out there. Yeah. Use the coupon code, get us right. some money coming in. Yes. Oh, yeah. We have, have a way now people can give us a tip if they want to. Tell us how to do that. Is it yeah, on so just our website? On our website, yeah. That Which is really cool. cool. So we can, yeah, because there's definitely expenses going on, you know, and we love a little help if you have it to give. Yeah. And if you don't, that's okay. We just love your support and give us five stars on Apple. That would be awesome. Share, <laughs> Share it. Write a review. Write yeah. a review. Oh, like Join it. Join our Facebook page. Like our Facebook page. All that fun stuff. There's a million things. You know, you hear this on every other podcast in that youtube channel that you listen to so like true. subscribe review uh -huh. share, <laughs> follow yeah. everything all of it so anything else murph is that pretty much it is that everything that's it all right then i'm just gonna see you later alligator after a while crocodile bye everybody bye